Take a special look at the making of these beautiful wooden guide boats next on Martha. love boats, all kinds. I like yachts, of course. I love canoes, sailboats, and motorboats. And this is very exciting. Last week, I actually got what's called an Adirondack guideboat. Uh, take a look at the making of this incredible boat and my very first outing in it on Peach Lake. The Adirondack Guideboat Company produces beautiful wooden boats that include the best design features of both a rowboat and a canoe. Co-owners David Rosen and Steve Kolbach built a guideboat like this for me at their shop in North Ferrisburg, Vermont. In this region, boats of this kind have been produced for decades. The Adirondack Mountains are considered a very pristine and wonderful and wild wilderness. By the 1880s, there were 500 room hotels. So the I-boats were developed and take that clientele, hunting and fishing. And so a lightweight boat was needed to carry it from lake to lake. The boat also needed to be big enough to carry the guide, his client, hunting dogs, and whatever game or fish they caught. It's easy to make a fast boat. It's easy to make a stable boat. Trying to make both of those in one, that's a demanding design task. But it's a skill Steve has perfected over the past 25 years of designing and building these boats. I really think Steve's biggest contribution is he took one of his wooden boats and cast the mold from it to make the Kevlar and fiberglass boat. It takes a full week to make one of the Kevlar fiberglass boats, while a wooden boat like the one I got requires over three months of work. Steve showed us the boat building process. Well, the first step in making a Cedar Adirondack guide boat is to produce all the various parts. Over 120 parts are made for one boat. Like the original guide boats of the 1800s, local cherry wood, pine, spruce, and even ash are used because they are lightweight and durable. The original boats were shaped by the ribs. They would find a spruce root stump that would approximate the actual shape of the boat. Because you couldn't get a spruce tree to grow from gunnel to gunnel, it was done in two parts coming together. Now we're able to make a rib that creates the whole shape of the boat. To make these ribs, six wood strips are placed in a steam box for 45 minutes so that the wood is pliable. Then Steve has just 90 seconds to bend the wood to fit into the mold and put the clamps in place. After a day and a half, the strips are glued and cut to create the ribs. They are then attached to the bottom board or keel of the boat. Martha's boat will be a 15-foot boat, and there will be 13 ribs. I'm going to use a cabinet maker's rasp to take the corners of the ribs off or bevel them. This ensures that the strips will lay flat against the ribs. Strips are put on with epoxy glue, which we mix up and put a little filler in it, and the epoxy will be smeared on the top edge of this strip here. And the next strip will be put right on top of it and screwed individually as it passes over each rib. A total of 48 cedar wood strips will cover the boat, 24 on each side. The newly sided boat is sanded and then covered with a large sheet of fiberglass. The fiberglass is brushed with epoxy, which will help prevent water damage. After four coats of epoxy are applied, the boat is varnished. Four coats of varnish will be applied to the inside of the boat as well. Once dry, fixtures like the seats are put in place. To make the oars, an eight-foot long wood plank is run through a jointer to create a straight edge. Then a rectangular piece of wood is glued to each side. And a bandsaw cuts out the shape of the oar. Steve designed a special machine that uses a metal ball running over a mock oar to guide the drill bit and shape the actual oar. Finishing touches are made on the handle and the oar is varnished. Custom brass pieces are used to attach the oar to the boat. Well, the very last part that goes on the boat would be the builder's plate. And especially for Martha, we made a plate with her name on it. After 300 hours of hard work, my boat was finished and delivered to Peach Lake in Brewster, New York. David took my trainer's son, Mikey Tedesco, and me out on the water to teach us the nuances of rowing the guideboat. Oars cross over in the middle, so you always have to have one hand in front of the other. Mikey was up for the challenge. Isn't it amazing that a child that size could row us? Boy, yes. Good job. I also went for a row. The boat moves with ease and can travel up to seven knots, or eight miles per hour. The Adirondack Guideboat Company sells over 200 boats each year, but only four or five of them are wooden models, and I'm extremely proud to be the owner of one of them. This is a beautiful way to spend an afternoon, and I look forward to enjoying my Adirondack Guideboat on many afternoons to come.
something great that I just learned. If you don't want to purchase the boat already assembled, you, and I'm talking primarily to the men in the audience, can buy a kit and put it uh, together yourself for a fraction of the cost. And I'm assured that it's not hard at all. It will take some time, right, Steve? It will, about well, 300 hours. 300 hours, but boy, it is the most, one of the most beautiful, and I was saying backstage, kind of poetic boats I've ever, ever been in. It's really easy to row, um, it's quiet, it doesn't use up any fossil fuel, it doesn't pollute, it is just extraordinary. And Francesca really liked riding in it. <laughs> I think both the dogs would like to sit in it and take a, take a little uh, run. But I'm going to put it uh, back in the lake this weekend and get some good exercise rowing it. Um, and uh, it's very nice to have both of you, both David Rosen and uh, his partner, Steve Callback, in the audience. The owners of Adirondack Guide Boat Company. And, um, and thank you very, very much. I hope you like the piece, and uh, we certainly loved doing it. And I just wanted to ask one thing. Have you ever had, a, like, a moose in it that you've hunted? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it looked like it had a big deer in it. That was 150 years ago. Yes, but they're the same size, <laughs> and your boats are strong. Anyway, it's a, it's a really, really um, beautiful way to spend time on the water.